The City of Brownsville is launching a series of courses to inform and empower our residents to make the best decisions possible for their families. The course is developed by the Brownsville Public Health Department and is an informative guide to educate expecting mothers about nutrition during pregnancy. Pregnancy and healthy eating will cover a variety of topics and will help empower our families to make informed decisions when it comes to their and their baby's nutrition. The goal of this course is to provide you with a basic understanding of dietary changes during pregnancy, the necessary food groups for a healthy diet, along with diabetes and high blood pressure medicine. Additionally, we will share local prenatal and pregnancy resources and services available to you in Brownsville. Let's begin by discussing what exactly is a healthy lifestyle during pregnancy. During pregnancy, a healthy lifestyle consists of regular exercise and a well-balanced diet. Consuming a balanced diet is the best way to ensure that you and your baby have energy, vitamins, and minerals to grow and thrive. Prenatal vitamins can be used as supplements uh, to make up for any nutritional gaps that are not being met in your diet. Um, even with a well-balanced diet, weight gain can be expected during a healthy pregnancy. Gaining an appropriate amount of weight during pregnancy is normal and healthy. However, gaining too little or too much weight may lead to complications during delivery. So contact your healthcare provider if you have any concerns regarding your nutrition, weight gain or loss and everything in between. Uh, during pregnancy, your body requires more energy to support your baby's development. On average, you will need an extra 400 calories. 400 calories is equal to one small meal or two small snacks. Now we are going to review portion sizes. Sometimes we may have um, access to measurement cups to figure out serving sizes, but luckily there is a quick way to estimate the amount of food you are consuming by using your hand. One cup of food is equivalent to a closed fist. Three-fourths of an ounce is equivalent to the palm of your hand. One cup is equivalent to your thumb. Remember that these are rough estimates and may differ from person to person depending on body proportions. Here we have the different food groups. There are five main food groups. Fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, dairy. In a well-balanced diet, we should consume food from each food group considering serving size. Now we are going to review each food group in depth and discuss the appropriate amount you should aim to eat. Vegetables of all types, dark green, red and orange, beans, peas and lentils, starchy and other vegetables. Fruits, um, especially whole fruits. Grains, at least half of which are whole grain. Uh, dairy, including fat-free or low-fat milk, yogurt and cheese, and or lactose-free versions and fortified soy beverages and yogurt as alternatives. Protein foods, including lean meats, poultry and eggs, seafood, beans, peas, lentils, and nuts, seeds, and soy products. Uh, let's begin by discussing protein foods. Um, as you can see, protein-rich foods consist of lean meats, poultry and eggs, seafood, beans, peas, and lentils, and nuts, seeds, soy products. A wide variety of options are available. Here is a table that outlines the amount of protein you should each eat each day and the amount each type of protein you should aim to consume weekly. It is recommended that during pregnancy you should consume between five to eight ounces of protein daily. You can add variety to your protein needs throughout the week by eating 23 to 33 ounces of meats, poultry, eggs, uh, six to eight, uh, 10 ounces of seafood, four to seven ounces of nuts, seeds, and soy products. Here are more examples of protein rich foods along with the equivalent amounts of each. You can use this as a guide to visually determine the amount of protein uh, foods you are eating. Uh, one small chicken breast is roughly equivalent to three ounces. Uh, one egg um, is one ounce. One can of tuna, and this is drained, um, is equivalent to three to four ounces. One small lean hamburger is two to three ounces. One ounce of nuts or seeds um, uh, is roughly two um, ounces equivalent. Um, a quarter cup of cooked beans and peas or lentils is one ounce. And one tablespoon of peanut butter or almond bread, butter is approximately one ounce of protein. The benefits of consuming protein uh, cannot be understated as it helps both you and your baby during pregnancy. Consuming enough protein is important for supporting the growth of breast and uterine tissue along with increasing blood supply. Protein also supports fetal development by promoting growth of tissues, including the brain. 
The next food group category we will discuss is grains. Food in the grains group inc include breads, pastas, rice, oats, and a variety of additional sources. Recommended amount of grains that you should eat during pregnancy is between six to 10 ounces. Of this amount, at least half should be whole grains. But what exactly are whole grains? Whole grains are grains that have undergone little to no processing. Because of this, whole grains retain many essential vitamins and minerals. Not only does eating a whole grain uh, support a healthy pregnancy, but they have been associated with lowering risk of heart disease, type two di diabetes, cancer, and many more. Uh, whole grain foods um, include uh, foods like popcorn, brown rice, oatmeal. Refined grains are grains that have been processed. While they are less nutritious than whole grains, refined grains can be incorporated into a healthy diet. Refined grains include cereal, crackers, breads, bagels, and tortillas. The benefits of grains cannot be understated. Grains are our body's main source of energy. During pregnancy, your body needs energy to support your growing baby. Additionally, grains are an excellent source of fiber, and fiber helps reduce blood cholesterol levels and promotes proper bowel function. Not only does eating whole grains support a healthy pregnancy, but they have been associated with lowering risks of heart disease, type two diabetes, cancer, and more. The last food group we are going to look at is vegetables. Vegetables come in a wide variety. However, not all vegetables contain the same nutrients. In order to have a balanced diet during your pregnancy, it is important to be able to distinguish the different kinds of vegetables and know how much of each type you should consume. In total, you should have about 2.5 to three and a half cups of vegetables a day. Dark green vegetables include foods like broccoli, spinach, kale, and other leafy greens. You should aim to consume between one and a half to two and a half cups of dark greens each week. The next category of vegetables are red and orange vegetables. Every week you should consume between five and a half to seven cups of red and orange vegetables. This includes foods like raw tomatoes, carrots, baked sweet potatoes, and red bell peppers. Starch vegetables are distinguished by their higher content in starch carbohydrates. These vegetables contain more calories than non-starch vegetables. Starch vegetables include regular baked potato, corn, and green peas. You should aim to have five to seven cups of starchy vegetables weekly. Other vegetables that don't fall into the previous categories are cauliflower, mushrooms, celery, cucumber, green beans, green peppers, lettuce, mushrooms, onions. Um, eating between four to six cups of these vegetables weekly is a part of a well-balanced diet. Vegetables are an important source of many nutrients and vitamins. Additionally, they are another major source of fiber. Next, we're going to discuss high blood pressure. High blood pressure during pregnancy can put you and your baby at risk for problems during your pregnancy and delivery. The good news is that high blood pressure is preventable and treatable. Getting treatment for high blood pressure is important before, during, and after pregnancy. The following are management techniques if you have high blood pressure during your pregnancy. Monitor your blood pressure. Take blood pressure medication as prescribed. Go to each of your prenatal visits with your doctor. Stay active. Eat a healthy diet. Like always, make sure to contact your personal health care provider to get the best advice for your medical conditions. This concludes the presentation over key nutrients for a healthy pregnancy. However, the discussion does not have to end here. If you have any questions about this topic or another, feel free to reach out to us at the Public Health Department at 956-542-3437 or check us out on Facebook at BTX Maternal and Child Health. Thank you for your time.